Welcome back. Investigators are slowly piecing together a profile of Andreas Lubitz, the co-pilot of the doomed flight 9525, 27 years old. Friends say he was nice and seemed well-adjusted. Lubitz was physically active, running marathons and working out. He was reportedly he had been treated for depression and may have gone through a breakup recently. Well, today a prosecutor said Lubitz hid his illness from the airline. We have found um, a letter that indicated that he was declared by a medical doctor unfit to work. There's a whole lot to discuss with this. Let's bring in now psychologist Javier Amador, who is the director of the LEAP Institute. Dr. Devi Nampia Parempo is the assistant professor at New York University School of Medicine. Also back with me is Angel Masson, Richard Quest, David Susi, and Jim Kreinler. So this co-pilot hid the information from employees. He was declared, this is, this is going to be for you, Dr. Devi. He was declared by a medical doctor unfit to work. And I want to get the language right here. It is unclear whether it was physical or psychological. Medically, could you suffer from something that would make you unfit for work? What could that be? Sure. So there's a variety of things. So it's hard to really draw a conclusion. I mean, we look at the job that the person's doing and the time frame, whether this is temporary or if it's permanent. So for me as a physician, you know, if I were to break my right hand, I'd be unfit for work in terms of operating. But that doesn't mean I couldn't do another job. So for him, we don't know exactly what it means. Maybe it was something with his vision, hearing, could be his psychological status, but something that would prevent him from doing that job. And again, we don't know if it's temporary or if it's permanent. Okay. But when you look at this as a doctor, now. What, do you, go ahead, what, do you, what do you make of it? Well, this? now I think, you know, given his age, it's very unlikely for a doctor to say someone is unfit for work permanently, especially in their 20s. So I think that we have to look at that a little bit further. Okay. And the multiple doctor's notes found in his, might we find out if it was something chronic from those notes? One of them, at least we know, the one that said he was unfit, that was torn up. But Sure. I mean, he might have thrown that, I mean... Uh, torn that up just out of anger though. So we don't know that all these medical notes were for the same condition, so that's something to just keep in mind. I mean, by itself, you know, it doesn't mean anything, but looking at the whole pattern, of course, it's more concerning. All right, I want to go to Dr. Amador now. So what could, psychologically, what could he suffer from that can make him unfit to work, doctor? Well, there's a, the host, there's a host of disorders when left untreated, and I want to emphasize that from the start. When left untreated, could impair a pilot's ability to, to function as a pilot safely. Clinical depression certainly is on the table, uh, along with that suicidal thoughts, bipolar disorder, uh, certain anxiety disorders, panic uh, disorder, etc. But again, the common theme here is when there's an impairment in the person's ability to control their emotions, if there's suicidal thoughts, if there's impairment in cognition, attention, um, ability to um, uh, uh, you know, con conform their, their judgment uh, accurately. Uh, all of these things are parts of the disorders I've, I've described, but when left untreated. But doctor, speaking to people today, a lot of people, I'm sure millions of people in this country are, suffer from depression, whether it's mild or extreme or what have you, but they go about their business every day, they deal with it, and they don't kill people. That's absolutely right. And, and, and let's be clear about something. This looks like a suicide and, and mass murder, obviously. Um, we just don't know yet. <laughs> we don't have the crystal ball. Um, and, and you're quite right about that. Millions of people do suffer from clinical depression. Uh, some don't ever get treated. It resolves on its own after eight weeks, uh, after 12 weeks. Others get treatment, return to work. Yeah. I've treated, in fact, I've treated many New York City police officers and military officers who are clinically depressed in treatment and, and working. Uh, they, in fact, though, just to comment on the earlier point, don't report up to the chain of command that they're being treated for a psychiatric disorder. My entire panel is back with me. Um, Richard. Yes. We are told that from the voice recordings, <coughs> what they have is that he was breathing normally. That guy... He couldn't even do it. His hands were sweating. He's, I mean, how can... I, I'm going to go slightly different on this. The man who told us that he was breathing normally was the prosecutor. Mm -hmm. He'd only heard the tape 
for a matter of a few hours within the previous 12 hours. Mm -hmm. I'm, I, I think when he says he's breathing normally, he's not hearing any signs of labored breathing from a stroke, or he's not hearing any gasps, or he's not hearing anybody croaking. But this idea, I don't know, but all I'm just putting one and two together, and when I, he, he, the, the prosecutor yesterday had literally, he admitted he'd only heard it overnight. But he also said that he didn't hear any signs of capacitation as he, well. He, correct. He didn't hear any signs of He said well. he didn't hear any signs of stroke. He didn't hear any signs of, um, you know, labor breathing. But the idea that, that, that uh, Ludwig was just sort of sitting there calmly breathing, I, I, I'm not so sure. Well, if, think, go ahead, I'm sorry. I think that we have to differentiate two things. I mean, if a person is a sociopath, you know, they might be totally calm in this type of situation, as opposed to if someone has a medical yes. problem and then they become psychotic and then they're with, suicidal and homicidal. And, and that a disassociation, yeah. like a total disassociation yeah. with exactly. their, with their, where they are. And there's no medication, as you said, to me. That can for treat a sociopath, a sociopath. yeah. Treat a sociopath. Uh, apparently he had just broken up, recently broken up, Dr. Amador, with his girlfriend. With, can that cause, I, would, I guess it could, something this serious to make him want to kill everybody, 150 people? Well, look, we, we, we've certainly have seen breakups lead to horrific, you know, acts of, of violence. Um, but there's usually a story, and, and if I draw my forensic experience right now, the story usually does lead to, to a history of untreated mental illness. And, uh, you know, people break up with girlfriends every day. Obviously, that's, that's not, and I know that's not what you're really asking. But that in conjunction with uh, an untreated mental illness that he's not reporting because it's not safe for him to report it to his supervisor. He sure hit it well. Very well be part of I mean, this. And it sounds they, like an impulsive act. It does not sound like a like a planned act. Just, does this bother you? I, it doesn't bother me per se, but I just think, and, and it's, it's to the to, to the to doctor's point, the if you start doing psychological examinations every six months, the sh uh, is it worth it, is what I'm basically asking. Yes, you've had this particular incident, horrific and dreadful, but the reliability of a psychological examination, coupled with the sheer amount of effort, extent, bureaucracy that's going to that's go into it. That's a good question for Dr. Debbie. the interpretation <laughs> of that. Because you said there's, there, there's not a drug or a pill for a, a sociopath. And exactly. you can see, because most people who have these issues, and they hide it very well. Most people have no idea. Yeah, if you want to be treated, then you might come forward with this, but you wouldn't to your employer. You might go to your own doctor and talk about these different things. But then you also wonder, well, I was just gonna say, I mean, people usually don't go from just having a straight mental illness or condition like depression to killing people, right? Mm -hmm. If you're psychotic in between, that could be from medications, that could be even low blood sugar in a diabetic, but you have to have something in between that would probably make you look bizarre and yeah. make other people notice. So what would you say are the pre precursors to this horrific action. Do we have all night? <laughs> it, no, well, no, no, it, what I'm thinking about is we're talking about the stuff from the inside, the chemical imbalances, yeah. the, mm. the previous experiences that they're bringing along with them. I'm no psychologist, but the outside stuff is what bugs me, the, the divorces. and the, the, Why don't we measure that stuff? So if you why bring up with your girlfriend, that? you get a divorce, you have something you that have traumatic, your mom sickly, has been you know? sick to you. Yeah. Should you be? Should it be mandatory that, that you take some time off? Yeah. Is that what you're well, saying? Well, I don't know. I mean, a lot of people go through all kinds of stressful events, right? Yeah. But they're not necessarily dangerous to other people. So we rely on people to tell us the truth if we ask them. But we don't fly calls? an airplane with 150 people. Uh, that's we true. Don't. But even, <laughs> but even next, as a cop or a doctor, our aviation experts are going to continue to talk. <laughs> We're going to answer your questions. Use, make sure you use the hashtag German Wings Cues.